Welcome back from the break. I'm your host, Sarah Danu Tashna, and we're now counting down to the last 30 minutes of the show. Today is Wellness Wednesday, and as we stated earlier, that our main focus of the day is going to be on fibroids. Joining me in this conversation is uh, Cecilia Karanja from Fertility Kenya. Karibu sana to K24 Alpha Jury. Thank you. And then we have Dr. Oindi Felix, who is a gynecologist from Aga Khan University. Very nice to have you. Karibu you so sana to K24 Alpha Jury. Maybe you can just tell us more about your source before we start the conversation. Let me start with the lady, Cecilia. Okay, my name is Cecilia Werimo Karanja, founder of Fertility Kenya. Fertility Kenya deals with persons affected with infertility. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, my name is Dr. Felix Oindi. Mm -hmm. I'm an obstetrician, stock gynecologist at the Aga Khan University Hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of my day to day work is to attend to patients who have various problems, including mm -hmm. uterine fibroids. Okay. Karibuni Sana, we are so happy to have you this Wednesday morning. And uh, as I stated earlier, that we are going to be focusing on fibroids. And before we actually delve deeper into this conversation, maybe we should understand, for those people who are watching the show and they still don't understand what fibroids are, let's start by defining it. Let me start with you, Dr. Wendy. Okay, so uh, uterine fibroids are um, non-cancerous growths of the uterus. Mm -hmm. They usually... <coughs> um, uh, it's the commonest uh, growth actually found in uh, the reproductive system of women mm -hmm. and um, affects women of mainly the reproductive age, mm -hmm. which means the ages of about 15 to 49, though mm -hmm. they can be found after that, mm -hmm. and they present with various symptoms. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when you have them, you don't know you have them. Mm -hmm. Actually, majority of women are walking outside here and they don't know they, they don't have know. them. Yes. The few who get to know they have them, mainly it can be because they came to hospital for another reason. Mm -hmm. And um, those who come for the reasons mainly will come with things like bleeding. Mm -hmm. Usually your periods become heavier than usual. Uh, your periods will become more painful mm -hmm. at times. Mm -hmm. And occasionally when they are very big, they can exert pressure on the surrounding structures. Mm -hmm. So surrounding structures in this case is uh, the urinary bladder, which mm -hmm. is in the front. So mm -hmm. patient will report that they usually need to go to the loo many times mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. When they are at the back side, you'll present with constipation. Of course, occasionally when they are very big, you can also find uh, somebody looking like they're carrying a mass. You could think they're pregnant just oh. because the uterus has enlarged so much yeah. and they could look like uh, they're carrying a baby inside. Yeah. So the tumors grow with time. Yes, so okay. um, the longer you stay with it, the longer it grows yeah. till you reach the age of menopause mm -hmm. where we expect naturally uh, as your hormones start declining, the fibroids also start shrinking in size. Okay. And Cecilia, this is such a big problem, especially, you know, with girls and women, because 20 to 50% of the women who are in the reproductive age are actually uh, suffering from uh, um, uh, of, of fibroids, right? Mm -hmm. That's a very high number. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so why do you think that um, most of the time it is impossible actually for us even to go get checked for this, to go for regular checkups? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think um, the, why we don't go for checkup is because we think we are very normal mm -hmm. unless we fa we get to a point where a doctor is saying you have maybe heavy heavy flows, heavy flows yeah. or maybe you're looking for a baby and you're not getting. Mm -hmm. So that is why you, you, you realize maybe you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And by the time when you go to the doctor, when they check, they see that you have the fibroids. But um, I think it's it's a high time that every, every woman should be checked mm -hmm. for fibroids. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always say should be checked also for fertility because mm -hmm. uh, you could be fertile today, tomorrow you, do, you don't know about it. So it's very important to occasionally go for checkups, for fertility checkups. Mm -hmm. And uh, among the fertility checkups is the ultrasound mm -hmm. where you're checked whether you have the fibroids or not. Okay. Yeah. So what exactly causes the fibroids tumors? If I may ask, Dr. Indi. Okay. Um, so the actual cause of fibroids is actually not known. Mm -hmm. It's a, we call it a disease of theories. When we say theories, it means people have come up with various explanations to try mm -hmm. and uh, answer the question of why does somebody have fibroids. You'll get mm -hmm. two people with all characteristics that are the same, but one has mm -hmm. fibroids, one doesn't mm -hmm. have. So the commonest um, cause. Uh, of fibroids or the commonest risk factor for fibroids mm -hmm. is actually being black. When you are a black Which race... Which is strange. Yes, it's somehow strange. Yes. But it's actually a disease that is not very common in the 
uh, Caucasians, Caucasian, yes. uh, or non-black. And black doesn't necessarily mean black skin color, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just mean the black race. So mm -hmm. whether you are a black but you are black but very light, mm -hmm. you still have the mm -hmm. black race. Mm -hmm. So it's a disease which is very common in the blacks. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, estimated that um, by the age of 50, seven to eight out of 10 women mm -hmm. actually have fibroids. So mainly it's the being black. Now the other things which have been shown to be attributed now include um, if you have a family history, mm -hmm. your sister, your mother, mm -hmm. your um, aunties have had fibroids, mm -hmm. then you are at increased risk of having fibroids. Mm -hmm. um, those people who prolong the childbearing, at least um, you find you're having your first child maybe by the age of In 35, yes. uh, 40. Mm -hmm. Also, you find uh, you've given the uterus enough time to grow those mm -hmm. things. But mm -hmm. there's still people you'll get who are in their 30s and 40s and mm -hmm. have not had children and they don't have and it. They're okay. Yeah, so those others are mainly associated factors, mm -hmm. but not really answering the, qu the question of why did this person have fibroids and not the Absolutely. other one. And I was actually just reading somewhere yesterday and okay. they were saying that obesity can actually contribute. It's a contributing factor. Is that true? Yes, very true. Uh, so the problem with excess fat in the body is that it gets converted to a hormone called estrogen. Mm -hmm. This hormone called estrogen is actually the one that drives the growth of the fibroids. Mm -hmm. and that's why when a, a lady usually gets to menopause, the fibroids start shrinking in size. Mm -hmm. So when you are uh, obese, the excess fat gets converted to estrogen, mm -hmm. which then stimulates the growth of the fibroids. Mm -hmm. And even those women who've hit menopause mm -hmm. and they're obese, they, some of them we find their fibroids will not shrink as fast as those who are normal mm -hmm. body size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now since Cecilia, we don't know the causes, can we identify like some of the outstanding symptoms that you can actually look, like, look out for just to know that, okay, fine, if you have this, then there's a possibility of you having fibroids. Okay, um, I think there are those uh, things that you can really outline, eh? mm -hmm. cause I also, I also had the fibroids, um, uh, and uh, I was done the paroscopy to remove the fibroids. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think after my third, my third born, I was telling Dr. Terry, mm -hmm. I was told that I still have some. They have regrown back. Eh? So uh, I think uh, the main, the main, uh, how you can detect that you have fibroids is heavy flow. Yeah, okay. like for me, I really have very heavy flow. And by heavy, what do you mean? Your periods are very heavy. That's from the first day? If from the to first the day, day to the last day. Maybe the first, second, and the third day are very heavy. Mm -hmm. And like the other people, you find the first day is not it's very, is, is, is not heavy. The second day is a bit heavy. Then mm -hmm. you will find that like it would even extend to even five to six, seven days. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the other the other thing is pain when you're having your periods. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I do experience the pain when uh, when um, I'm having my periods. Mm -hmm. So basically, those are the the, the earliest sy 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 yeah. symptoms. Yeah. Yes, and, and those are the things that I've realized. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when you talk about pain during your menstrual cycle a lot of people think it's normal like mm -hmm. it's normal for you to feel the pain. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have anything like normal? period pains? Um, I think for me, it's uh, when you have uh, uh, the fibroids, it's mm -hmm. to the extreme. Even if you take painkillers, like... They don't it, seem to work. They, they don't seem to work, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it depreciates, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. And like when you have no more periods and you take painkiller, it will just disappear. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know, maybe Dr. Tari could explain to us like uh, if that is what happens, but for me, that is what I've experienced, okay. yes. Okay. Yes, so, so that, that's, that's very true. Actually, the three main symptoms of uh, fibroids, as she has said, is the pain. Mm -hmm. And the pain is usually during periods. Mm -hmm. uh, bleeding. Uh, mm -hmm. And most of the time you find um, it's a change of your bleeding pattern. Mm -hmm. So I can't really say uh, because you use, say, during your heaviest day, five pads a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how you've been using them all along mm -hmm. since you started having menses. That's mm -hmm. because of fibroids. Mm -hmm. There are other causes of heavy bleeding, mm -hmm. which is uh, the reason why we encourage those who have such symptoms to come for checkup. Mm -hmm. So if you, before your period, so in a particular pattern, you bleed for three, four days on your heaviest day, you're using two, three pads or mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. Then now you start having, you're using um, five, six mm -hmm. pads. At okay. times you have to use the heavy duty mm -hmm. pads. At times you have to use mm -hmm. double pads or use a tampon and a pad. Mm -hmm. So it basically means your bleeding has got heavier. Mm -hmm. 
um, the additional one she said is a mass symptom, the one who feel that there is a mass on the body, mm -hmm. and at times you can see the tummy uh, looking big. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few patients actually will present with uh, uh, symptoms of having been trying to conceive and they're not getting uh, pregnant. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, inability to conceive is one of the symptoms also, so that when we start doing the workups, we find actually you had fibroids, mm -hmm. which are preventing anything from growing. Okay. But I'll still emphasize that majority of patients don't have any symptoms. Actually, Whatsoever. no symptom at yes, all. Yes, because I was, I, was, I was actually just looking at um, some of the symptoms, and they said frequent urination. So how do you differentiate that with the UTI? Because it's the same mm -hmm. thing. Yes, Here. yes. Uh, so uh, uh, when the fibroids are very big and mm -hmm. they are on the front side, mm -hmm. they will put pressure on the uh, urinary bladder, mm -hmm. which is the, the urine bag really. Mm -hmm. And when they're putting pressure on the urinary bladder, mm -hmm. the bladder will not expand to its full capacity. So you find it can only hold small volumes of urine. Mm -hmm. So you find the, whatever comes in needs to come out. Mm -hmm. um, with a UTI, you'll still have those symptoms, mm -hmm. but actually your urine, you'll have a, passing, a burning sensation when you're passing urine. Mm -hmm. So you have the key symptom is this other one has no pain, this one has, uh, has pain. Mm -hmm. But in terms of urinating more frequently than mm -hmm. normal, both symptoms are the same. They're the same. The yeah. other key thing about a UTI is at times when you go to empty the bladder, you feel like there's some remaining, so you want to go back soon after. Uh, right. With fibroids, that is not the case. Yes. Most of the time, you just pass and you're okay. Okay. And then we have painful intercourse. Can you explain to us how, how um, that happened? Yeah, so uh, another common symptom is um, that painful intercourse. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's because the, the structures that hold the uterus in place mm -hmm. get overstretched by the fibroids as they grow. Mm -hmm. So any other addition of pressure from outside is going to stretch them more. Mm -hmm. And that can cause uh, painful uh, intercourse. Mm -hmm. But also there are other conditions which could be coexistent. Mm -hmm. So you see, um, fibroids most of the time don't stand on their own. Yeah. So you could have um, fibroids and you find you have another condition mm -hmm. causing painful intercourse. So painful mm -hmm. intercourse per se is not a common symptom of mm -hmm. fibroids, mm -hmm. though it can occur. There are conditions like one called endometriosis, which is a more mm -hmm. common cause mm -hmm. of painful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, intercourse, mm -hmm. which also causes actually painful bleeding as well. Absolutely. So when you have, the, re the, the need where you need to be evaluated is to differentiate whether you just have fibroids alone or there are fibroids and maybe these other conditions like endometriosis, because you even find uh, like the two conditions I've mentioned, actually, they share risk factors. Mm -hmm. So you'll find somebody has fibroids, and mm -hmm. on the other side, they have endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And the treatment approaches to the two are different. Wow. So again, the symptoms are not outstanding. Yes, yes. The causes is, is not well known. Yes. So how do you diagnose this? Okay. So, um, of course, the first thing will be uh, based on the symptoms the patient presents. Mm -hmm. So when you come in and you have pain, heavy bleeding, and all that, mm -hmm. uh, we suspect you could be having uh, fibroids, fibroids or yeah. these other things. So most of the time you are young, mm -hmm. you are having uh, painful periods, mm -hmm. recent change. Then the next natural thing is for you to have an examination by the doctor. Mm -hmm. Usually we look at the tummy. At times we might find the uterus enlarged. A normal um, a lady with no fibroids, most of the time you're not able to feel the uterus through the tummy when the doctor examines mm -hmm. you. But with uh, a uterus that has fibroids, you actually find the uterus is enlarged way up. Occasionally, you even get it above the belly button. Mm -hmm. So you don't even need to struggle. Just feel the tummy and you feel it. So in that case, you can actually almost be guaranteed. Mm -hmm. The only two things that will commonly cause that uh, in a young lady will either be fibroids or a baby. So mm -hmm. if they're not pregnant, then it will most likely be. Mm -hmm. be the fibroids. The fibroids yeah, yeah, then now you need to go to the next stage of now uh, doing investigations to, yeah. to actually confirm this. Okay. So the commonest uh, investigation we use is an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. It's very cheap, readily available, mm -hmm. and almost every outlet in the it country, yeah. even the smallest towns, have very an ultrasound. True, yeah. So uh, we do it an additional tool to help us confirm what we have suspected. Mm -hmm. So it will now tell us that actually what you are feeling is just a fibroid, mm -hmm. not a baby. Mm. Though they can occur together. Occasionally you can find there is a baby and a fibroid. So now what happens a, when it's occurring at the, at the same time? Uh, um, so um, uh, when we talk about uh, how we manage, for example, fibroids, mm -hmm. 
we only manage them if they're causing problems. Okay. So it doesn't mean seeing a fibroid yeah. equates removing it. Yes. Yeah. So most of the time, if you have a fibroid and you don't have any fertility issues, mm -hmm. your periods are okay, mm -hmm. uh, we don't even bother to do anything. But if you have fibroids and you come in pregnant already, yeah. The only thing is that your pregnancy journey might be a bit rough because of the pains, oh, but you okay. can actually carry the pregnancy all through to the end. And okay. many actually carry the pregnancies to the end. And uh, if the fibroids are not anywhere uh, on the baby's, uh, on the outlet of the birth canal, mm -hmm. then the baby can come out naturally without even needing mm -hmm. a caesarean section. Right. Cecilia, how was your experience? Mm -hmm. I think it's not interesting, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to your periods. Yeah. And um, of course the tummy, mm -hmm. I'm always being asked if I'm pregnant, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm not. So it's not, it's not an interesting thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's important we, we, we do, we do the, uh, we remove them. Okay. But for me, I think I'm scared of the surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we were talking with Dr. Harry, mm -hmm. there are other things that have come up. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to share, which is very interesting. Okay. In so did you undergo treatment. any kind of treatment personally? Um, I've not yet mm -hmm. for now. But mm -hmm. before that, I, I went through laparoscopy. Okay. Yeah, I've okay. gone through laparoscopy. And mm -hmm. of course, my three kids have done, uh, uh, my three children have done uh, uh, surgery. So I'm kind of... Uh, scared of theater and all going this thing. Going back again yes, to that. Yes, going back to that. And that is what people say, mm -hmm. like uh, in the organization, everybody's like, I, I don't want to go to the theater. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to mm -hmm. the theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, now with the new technology that Dr. Mm -hmm. is going to share, I, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important that we all go and do and do it. Okay. Yeah. Doctor, do we have any other options now apart from surgery? Because as Cecilia has said, you know, you get scared when you're here, you know, you have to go under the knife. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, as I said earlier, fibroids, you only touch them if they really need to be touched yes. when they need to be out. Mm -hmm. And mainly is to improve the quality of life of mm -hmm. the patient. Mm -hmm. So if you are bleeding heavily, then you will not be able to do your normal activities. Mm -hmm. Your blood level might be down. Mm -hmm. Then you need to get boosters or occasionally even blood transfusion mm -hmm. and such. So um, the commonest uh, treatment modality that we have is um, actually surgery. That's the traditional <laughs> one that everybody knows, yes. which um, we have to do an open surgery. So cut down on the lower part of the tummy, or if mm -hmm. they're very big, occasionally we might cut in the midline mm -hmm. to remove the fibroids. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, when there are not very many, and depending on the size and uh, their location, mm -hmm. there are few outside the uterus, we can do a laparoscopy, mm -hmm. which means we just use three incisions on the abdomen, usually mm -hmm. one at the belly button and mm -hmm. two on the sides, mm -hmm. then we are able to remove them. In the event that you just have fibroids uh, in the cavity, which means inside your uterus, you just have fibroids only there, mm -hmm. I need to emphasize that the fibroids that cause heavy bleeding are those inside the cavity or within the wall and pushing into the cavity. Mm -hmm. So those ones, we can actually remove them through the birth mm -hmm. canal. Mm -hmm. So we go in with a camera, uh, distend or balloon the, tummy, the uterus a bit, yeah. then we are able to shave them off. Mm -hmm. And the symptoms most improve and even chance of getting pregnant becomes higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, th those are the surgical options, mm -hmm. the common ones. Uh, we can also do medical treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, medical treatment means you don't want surgery, but you want your quality of life to be improved. Mm -hmm. So here mm -hmm. we're talking about using painkillers. Mm -hmm. Uh, for heavy flow, we can just use managing yeah, just fibroids. managing the symptoms, yes. really. And uh, there's some medicine we give to cause the fibroids to shrink, but mm -hmm. th that one usually when the medicine wears off, usually after six months, three to six months, mm -hmm. they grow back. So the new technology she was talking about is called uterine fibroid embolization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we target the arteries that supply the fibroids with blood because you realize that the fibroids grow within the uterus. Mm -hmm. So they get their blood supply from the uterus. Mm -hmm. So we go in through an artery in the leg, either the left or the right, and we go in with a, a small tubing, uh, and we are able to image it uh, in a screen and see it. Okay. Then we block the artery supplying the uterus okay. um, on both sides. From the knee? We go from the knee. There is okay. no cut on the, on the yeah. tummy. Yeah. And with that, actually, especially patients who have um, heavy bleeding, mm -hmm. their periods usually reduce by up to 95%. So you find wow. if you are somebody who uses 10 pads a day, for example, on your heaviest day, you mm -hmm. can go down to using one, or even occasionally just using a liner 
or something very light. Wow. So it's a common technology. We've mm -hmm. been doing it um, uh, at Aga Khan since 2009. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women have undergone it mm -hmm. with very positive results. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, those who fear the knife, and um, especially when you feel uh, you are almost uh, done with the childbearing, yes. you can consider it. Yeah, but even yeah. just hearing you explain to us how it actually, um, the procedure is taken, you know, it's a bit scary. Are there any risk factors? The, it's actually, uh, you need an expertise to do it. Yeah. So the people who do it are actually highly trained. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the risks for the uterine fibroid embolization are not as high as an open surgery. Mm -hmm. Because for one, um, before we do it, we map out the fibroids. Mm -hmm. So we'll do an MRI. So we only said earlier, we, you do an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Now when you need these additional procedures, you do an MRI. Though you can still do an MRI even as your first investigation, mm -hmm. but cost uh, becomes a, a bigger issue for a majority of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So with MRI, it's able to give us an actual number of the fibroids, mm -hmm. their location, and their sizes. And then we are able to see the approach to use to block them. Mm -hmm. So once we know this is the dominant fibroid, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to go in, and usually it's to block the uterine artery, mm -hmm. and occasionally any branches, any major mm -hmm. branches mm -hmm. going to the fibroids. Mm -hmm. So it's not scary. The whole procedure takes about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. 15, if it goes very long, maybe 30 minutes. 15 minutes, you're done, and you can walk you back to in theater you and out. Home. We usually observe wow. you in hospital for one day. Yeah. After one day, you go home. Mm -hmm. Compare with an open surgery, which can take even four hours, because if occasionally you can find you have many fibroids, yes. very tiny ones, yes. and um, then uh, you may not end up removing all the fibroids mm -hmm. with open surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, because as she has said, she had uh, fibroids removed, they now grown back. Mm -hmm. So with fibroids, with the, the embolization, because you block the blood supply, the chance of them, the symptoms coming back coming is back much is, less. Okay. So, and we always say prevention is better than cure. How can we prevent fibroids? Cecilia? Might you know, or uh, do we throw that question? I just throw it back to Dr. Terry because I don't think there's. Oh. I don't know. Okay, yeah. yeah. I don't so, think so is. I think, like for us, um, uh, the black race, we are already predisposed, mm -hmm. so we can't really prevent that. So that's an inherent thing. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of anything that you can actually go out of your way to do to prevent yourself from mm -hmm. having them, mm -hmm. there is uh, nothing specifically that has been shown. So the things mm -hmm. that they say, like. Um, uh, maybe childbearing, trying to have children. Those have, have just been shown to reduce mm -hmm. the occurrence. But mm -hmm. uh, we still get people who've had those children, even the first one by the age of early 20s, and they still have them. So wow. you don't have a specific thing that will tell you, now do A, B, C, D, so that you don't have fibroids. Okay. Yeah. Wow, thank you very much for joining us in this conversation. Cecilia, what an honor to have you on the show. And Dr. Oindi, we are so happy that you've come through and you've just given us important points on what to do. And I hope that you back at home learned a thing or two on fibroids or all the segments that we've actually covered right here on uh, K24 Alpha Jury. Mm -hmm. uh, we have now come to the end of the show, but remember the conversation still goes on on our social media platforms. Just remind you that our Facebook page is K24 TV. Instagram and Twitter is at K24 TV. You can keep on asking all the questions that you yeah. have and we will be right here to answer them. Absolutely. Thank you for driving that hugely informative conversation because like you know we said earlier, fibroids are more prevalent than one would imagine and they're just there are ways in which they can be managed that your life is just not a complete misery. Very true. Uh, that indeed wraps up Wellness Wednesday. We are done uh, for the day. We are back tomorrow, of course, as we get ready for the long weekend that is upon us. Coming very, very soon uh, to where you are. So make sure you've done all the work that you need to do. Because from Kesho, we yeah. all know the weekend begins. It's all downhill from there. Have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye.